Good to see you all. Yeah. I just came back from overseas a week ago. ago. I was in Myanmar. Uh, they used to be called this country Burma. Uh, officially, none day they called Myanmar. I was in Myanmar for about two, two weeks and also five days in Cambodia. When I was in Myanmar, um, I was enjoying to see people around me, uh, even a lot of uh, strangers. Everybody feels the same. When you go to this country, even though it's not that rich country, it's very rich in resources, natural resources. Um, but you feel the richness of uh, human beings. They are very friendly, very humble. Whenever you have something to ask, they are going to provide their best help uh, for us. And uh, one day we were having uh, lunch under a big tree. It was very comfortable. Suddenly, the tour guide received a phone call from a shop that we just bought something from. The shop manager uh, told the tour guide uh, the price of the total was different. Something wrong there. We were shocked. Oh, somebody did not pay the money correctly. <laughs> Somehow, after Sister Shita talked to the manager, she discovered that uh, the manager told us mm. somebody bought something from the shop. They overpaid the price, about overpaid $70, uh, $75. Do you know that $70 is almost a month's salary for local people? The manager said, please come and take back those $70. So they are very decent people and also very uh, worthy of a trust. Uh, so that's why uh, when we were in Burma, we enjoyed the stay. Finally, we went to Cambodia. It's very humid, very hot. <laughs> we sweat all the time. But looking around all those old temples, you uh, feel uh, the trip was very worthy. You are not looking on those stones. Actually, you are studying histories, cultures, artistic designs around the place. Somehow, I discovered in Myanmar, in Cambodia, so many Europeans, they visit those countries. They visiting those sites. Not many Americans. Uh, so uh, perhaps uh, from now on the, open, uh, the country is open to uh, the uh, foreigners and uh, if you have a chance uh, find a time to go to Myanmar and Cambodia and um, it's uh, very worth it to go. Uh, so this is the trip and uh, today let's continue to study the Sutra. The name of this sutra is the Diamond Sutra. Whenever you hear diamond, <coughs> you want to think about diamond is very sharp. It's going to cut through everything. So this diamond of wisdom will cut through all kinds of afflictions, all kinds of illusions. So we call this the Sutra of Diamond, Diamond Sutra. And also you have to remember that the essence of this Diamond Sutra basically teaches us how to be free from all kinds of attachment, all kinds of attachment, yeah. including Buddha's teaching. I think other sutras will teach us, okay, how to learn the Dharma, how to practice the teaching, how to grasp all the essence of uh, Buddha's words. But after we practice, practice for some time, we are reaching another level. 
in this level Buddha said be free from all kinds of attachments even Buddha's teaching just like a vehicle in the States we drive the car all the time almost every day okay today you finish your work you drive your car to your home when you arrive at your house do you carry the car with you in bed <laughs> no. you just leave the car in the garage you don't carry the car you know all the way to your uh, dining room or your bedroom so all Buddha's teachings are just like a vehicle at a certain point detach from those teachings and uh, today we have uh, chapter 17 for us to study it's a, a quite, quite a long chapter um, I would like to invite anyone who would you know volunteer yourself and then read this chapter for us and please read slowly not to rush so we can contemplate during the reading moment yeah, please okay. at that time the venerable Subhuti said to the Buddha world honored one may I ask you again that if daughters or sons of good family want to give rise to the highest most fulfilled awakened mind what should they rely on and what should they do to master their thinking the Buddha replied Subhuti a good son or daughter who wants to give rise to the highest most fulfilled awakened mind should do it in this way you must lead all beings to the shore of awakening but after these beings have become liberated we do not in truth think that a single being has been liberated why is this so? Subhuti, the Bodhisattva is still caught up in the idea of a self, a person, a living being or a lifespan that person is not an authentic Bodhisattva why is that? Subhuti, in fact there is no independently existing object of mind called the highest most fulfilled awakened mind what do you think, Subhuti? In ancient times, when the Tathagata was living with Buddha Dipankara, did he attain anything called the highest, most fulfilled, awakened mind? No, world out of one. According to what I understand from the teachings of the Buddha, there is no attaining of anything called the highest, most fulfilled, awakened mind. The Buddha said, Right you are, Subhuti. In fact, there does not exist the so-called highest, most fulfilled, awakened mind that the Tathagata attains. Because if there had been any such thing, Buddha Dipa, Dipankara would not have predicted of me. In the future, you will come to be a Buddha called Sakyamuni. This prediction was made because there is, in fact, nothing that can be attained that is called the highest, most fulfilled awakened mind. Why? Tathagata means the suchness of all things, dharmas. Someone would be mistaken to say that the Tathagata has attained the highest, most fulfilled awakened mind, since there is not any highest, most fulfilled awakened mind to be attained. Subhuti, so, the highest, most fulfilled awakened mind that the Tathagata has attained is neither graspable nor elusive. That is why the Tathagata has said, all dharmas are Buddha dharma. But what are called all dharmas are, in fact, not all dharmas. That is why they are called all dharmas. Subhuti, a comparison can be made with the idea of a great human body. Subhuti said, what the Tathagata calls a great human body is, in fact, not a great human body. Subhuti, it is the same concerning bodhisattvas. If a bodhisattva thinks that, that she has to liberate all living beings, then she is not yet a bodhisattva. Why? Subhuti, there is no independently existing object of mind called bodhisattva. Therefore, the Buddha has said that all dharmas are without a self, a person, a living being, or a lifespan. Subhuti, if the Bodhisattva thinks, I have to create a serene and beautiful Buddha field, that person is yet, not yet a Bodhisattva. Why? What the Tathagata calls a serene and beautiful Buddha field is not, in fact, a serene and beautiful Buddha field. And that is why it is called a serene and beautiful Buddha field. Subhuti, any Bodhisattva who thoroughly understands the principle of non-self and non-dharma is called by the Tathagata an authentic Bodhisattva. Thank you. Yes. <clears throat> mm -hmm. 
After we finish the reading, I would like to invite you to think about the term uh, we repeat in this paragraph, Bodhisattva, Bodhisattva. Perhaps many of you already know what is the meaning of a Bodhisattva. Uh, I still hope that uh, we can spend little time on these terms. What is the meaning of a Bodhisattva? Okay. In Buddhism, actually Bodhisattva is a title for certain practitioners. Okay. If a person say, I wanted to have a vows during my, my practice, basically uh, there are two categories of vows. One, I wanted to achieve Buddhahood. I wanted to uh, liberate myself from this sansara world. I wanted to better myself until I uh, achieve Buddhahood. So this is a kind of a vow. You wanted to purify yourself, reaching the highest stage of enlightenment, Nirvana. Okay. This is one kind of a vow. Another vow is, at the same time, I wanted to cultivate my compassion and loving kindness toward others. While I'm practicing the Dharma, I wanted to do whatever I can do to help others to understand Buddha's teaching. So, after a person who makes those vows as his own practice, then we give this person a title, you are a Bodhisattva. So if you ask me, Venerable Hang Yi, are you a Bodhisattva? I think I am a Bodhisattva. <laughs> because without those two vows, I won't be here today. Because of my vows, I wanted to achieve enlightenment. There's no doubt. Otherwise, there's no reason for me to study Dharma. And also, I wanted to help others at the same time. That's why I continue to stay in Houston to do whatever I can do for the temple. Yeah, and uh, uh, serve uh, members, participate programs. So because of those two vows, motivate my actions. And perhaps, if you like, you can call me uh, Bodhisattva Hang Yi. Okay. <laughs> so Bodhisattva is a, actually a title, a title, yeah, a title for everyone who uh, has uh, those two vows in their practice. So today we call this uh, statue Guan Yin Bodhisattva. The same. We use the Bodhisattva because. Guan Yin Bodhisattva, just uh, like us, having those two uh, vows in him. Uh, so Bodhisattva is a title. During the first level of this Bodhisattva practice, we do have to understand what is right, what is wrong, which way is good way, which way is wrong way. So. In the first level for Bodhisattvas, we emphasize on 10 good deeds. How to enhance on those good deeds is the fundamental practice of Bodhisattvas. Yeah. Uh, 10 good deeds including uh, uh, no killing, uh, no uh, stealing, no uh, sexu sexual misconduct, no lying, but no lying divided into four, no curse, no harsh words, and uh, uh, no beautiful words to seduce others. There are three categories on the speech. Finally, no greed, no hatred, no ignorance. We consider those are ten good deeds. So, as a Bodhisattva, during the first level, we have to understand how to uh, better ourselves, 
by practice those good ten good deeds. After we practice those ten good deeds for a long, long time, we want to elevate ourselves. Even during the practice, we don't want to have another attachment on those good deeds anymore. So we come to this chapter. Even don't think there's a highest level of nirvana you can achieve. Okay. So this is the way we describe Bodhisattva's path. There are two levels at least. If we wanted to divide them into two, at least there are two levels. This is the highest level of a Bodhisattva's path. So I wanted to ask you that uh, which level are you in if you are Bodhisattva? You cannot say that uh, today I'm still confused about good or bad and right or wrong. I'm still confusing. At this moment, you say, I don't want to listen to the Dharma. I don't want to study the Dharma. I want to detach from all Dharmas. You are not qualified yet. <laughs> <laughs> so be careful, because sometimes uh, some Buddhists, they will say, I'm a Bodhisattva. I want to detach from everything. One day, a young man tear the sutra in front of me. <laughs> this is not real. <laughs> so I can burn the sutra. I can you know, throw away the sutra. But when I talk to him about certain subjects, I discover that he's still strongly attached to his ideas, <laughs> his concepts. When he discovered that I did not agree with him, he had anger inside him. <laughs> so as long as we still have anger inside us, and uh, a lot of uh, wrong understanding inside of us, be careful, we are still in the first level. But today, let's continue follow these uh, sutras, uh, uh, chapters. Uh, we wanted to understand what is the second level of the practice. Okay. And uh, also today, uh, I wanted to mention something that uh, why this chapter taught us detach from the a kind of attachment we always wanted to reach the highest level uh, 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 of the uh, uh, stage. Actually, if we carefully analyze our human being's attitude, we have a kind of attitude. We use it all the time. Like, dislike, like, dislike. Because of this kind of attachment, we never actually cherish and fully use all kinds of conditions that we have. I'm going to uh, uh, a place. I wanted to join this group. After some time, I feel this group is not satisfied my needs. Then I'm going to move to another group. Okay, move to another place. And also, we are changing teachers all the time. We are changing different kind of uh, teachers. Sometimes we feel this is uh, something I like, but after you practice for some time, you dislike. So, a lot of students, actually, they are wasting time based on their own desire. The kind of like or dislike always motivate their practice. So today, <coughs> if we carefully study everything that we learn, I think in this sutra, there's a, a, a very uh, meaningful sentence here. All dharmas are Buddha dharma. All dharmas are Buddha dharma. <coughs> if we have the real wisdom to see things as the way it is, 
actually all dharmas are Buddha Dharma. We can learn something from it. If we don't have the kind of wisdom to see through things as the way it is, we always attach to superficial phenomena. Something I like, something I dislike. Based on comparison, to move ourselves to different places, to see different teachers. So that is a wrong attitude to study the Dharma. And uh, uh, I remember that in ancient time, there was a Zen Buddhist monk. He was traveling outside the temple. After he entered a city, suddenly he discovered that his socks was getting loose. Sometimes we have to find a way to tie our socks. So he stopped himself and find a place. He can uh, be safely standing there and uh, raise his uh, 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 foot and uh, tidy. During the process, he was tidying his socks. He heard a lady was saying something upstairs. He did not notice that he was actually standing in front of a bar. <laughs> a place people are drinking and playing. Uh, a lot of females inside, males, females. And uh, at the moment, a lady uh, said something to a man. If you don't pay attention to me, I'm going to retreat myself and rest myself. If you don't pay attention to me, if you, you are not interested in to me, mm -hmm. I'm going to retreat and arrest myself. After you hear these words, how are you going to feel? We feel it's still, still the same, yes? Sir? Yeah, it's a very simple language. If you are not interested in me, if you don't pay attention to me, I'm going to retreat myself, rest myself. But somehow, this Zen master was practicing uh, the Dharma for a few decades in a monastery. He was trying to achieve enlightenment. After he heard the words from the lady, he was shocked. If you don't pay attention to me, I'm going to retreat myself. He enlightened at the moment. And from this story, what do you have in your mind? During meditation, a lot of people say, Venerable, Venerable, I cannot stop my thoughts. My thoughts is coming to me all the time. Okay, if you know you don't pay attention to those thoughts, they will retreat. The same. The same theory, the same theory. A lot of our problems, we feel they all exist. Actually, just simply because we always pay attention to those thoughts. Somebody say maybe certain words. Three years ago, it was bad to me. After that person said the words, it's gone three years ago. But somehow my memory still remembers those words. Every day I pay attention to those, to those words. So I still feel angry about the words. So from this story, let's remember all Dharmas are Buddha Dharma as long as we understand the facts, the truth. It's all interdependent, arising, phenomena. 
Yeah. Don't blame outside world. Oh, the environment is so bad. Other people are not very nice to me. Basically, good or bad, it's all based on the same facts, the same truth, interdependent arising. But as long as we don't have the attachment, we don't continue to pay attention to, to those unnecessary thoughts, we'll be free right away. So this is uh, the teaching of a Buddha, and uh, we wanted to <coughs> uh, learn more from this. Um, and also, I wanted to ask you another question. We are in darkness. When we visit Bagan, it's an ancient city full of pagodas. Uh, Based on some of the uh, articles, they say uh, a thousand years ago they used to have maybe uh, uh, 5,000 pagodas around. But nowadays, after earthquakes and a lot of um, aging process, uh, they are still full of pagodas, about 2,500 pagodas around. Some are very huge. After you enter the pagoda, you see, certain area is very pretty dark, not, not enough sunlight. Yeah. But suddenly, after you climb, climb to the top of the pagoda, you walk out the pagoda, you are on the terrace, you see the sunshine. Okay. At the moment, what's in your mind? You see the sunlight. Perhaps the first thoughts you feel, oh, it's very bright. The sun is shining. Are you continue to remind yourself of this all the way <laughs> on the day? There's sunshine. It's very bright. Normally, after a moment, after a short time, we just enjoy the sunshine, enjoy the brightness. Because darkness is gone. You don't have to continue to mention this is sunshine, this is bright. Is right? Mm -hmm. It's not necessary. Okay. And also let's think. When you say this is very good, you are a good person. What other thoughts do you have in your mind after you say this? We always compare things when we think. Do you notice that when you say, this is a very good person, she's a very uh, a good person, at the same time, behind it, somebody's not good. Is it right? <laughs> so actually, we have to liberate from this kind of uh, thinking. Always compare things. Today we say there's a nirvana stage for us to achieve because we compare things. Today we are now completely free with our illusions. We have ignorance. So we wanted to free ourselves. To be free, achieve enlightenment. But after you achieve enlightenment, you still say, I'm achieving enlightenment. That means you start thinking a lot of uh, illusions. So this is the way we want to understand how to completely detach from all those uh, thoughts. Yes. But when you don't attach to those thoughts, it doesn't mean you don't do good deeds. Good deeds will uh, happen will uh, perform naturally because you, you already get used to it. You don't have to have another motivation that this is I, I'm a Reverend Hang Yi, I'm a good monk, I wanted to do good things for you. I don't have to think on this process anymore. I just do it naturally. Just like you see the sunlight, you enjoy the sunshine. You don't have to use any words 
to just describe how beautiful is the sunlight. Yeah. Because Buddha said, there's no way for us to describe this stage, actually. Yeah. Uh, do you remember another example? Many of you uh, drive on Belair all the time. We have a name for the street, Belair. Can you describe Belair? How is it? What is it? It's impossible for us to describe the whole Belair Boulevard. It's interdependent arising based on all kinds of conditions. And it's changing moment to moment. Is it right? So there's no way to describe it. <clears throat> and, um, okay. Uh, uh, before I open the floor to, to you uh, to ask any question uh, that you have, I wanted to introduce another, uh, another story. It's a real story in Japan. <coughs> Have you heard uh, Venerable Ishu? I visited his temple in Kyoto. It's still there. Venerable Ishu, he was in Kyoto uh, uh, in ancient time when he was a novice. And uh, he always taking care of uh, uh, his teacher. And uh, his teacher has a very precious teacup made of jade, jade teacups. Very, very uh, precious. One day the teacher told uh, Yishu, Yishu, I'm going to another place for a few days. You stay in the temple, behave. <laughs> okay, and uh, continue on your study. Okay and I clean my room for me. <coughs> so the teacher left. And the issue, try to clean the room and tidy everything. Then he uh, decided to wash the jade teacups. <laughs> wash it. Maybe he was not careful enough. <laughs> he dropped the teacup. teacup. <laughs> The jade teacups was broken. <coughs> he said, uh, I'm in trouble. Uh, everything in my teacher's room, this is the best. <laughs> my teacher always feel this is the best uh, teacup in his lifetime. And uh, he uh, doesn't care about others, but he cares about these teacups. So I'm in trouble. <coughs> Then after a few, a few days, the teacher came back and uh, uh, Yishu, he was very smart. He was very smart, even he was young. And uh, he said, the teacher, I would like to uh, uh, talk to you for a moment, ask you something about the Dharma. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, is everything in the world uh, based on interdependent arising? Yes, yes. Is it true that everything uh, based on conditions uh, is impermanent? <laughs> yes. Because of this impermanent uh, facts, so everything is forming and aging and disappearing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Teacher, your teacup is disappearing. <laughs> uh, the reason for me to uh, uh, introduce uh, this story is something we understand. Actually, me, we may not be able to really use it in life. So we wanted to use Dharma as our own natural attitude, not just a theory in our mind. Okay, that's uh, important. So when you understand the teaching, you actually wanted to follow the teaching uh, as a way of your uh, daily life, not just a kind of a knowledge in our minds. <coughs> 